it's great to see all you folks. I appreciate you being here. And I see we've got some new people joining us. I appreciate you too. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is the weekend of August 11th. Now, if you're not familiar with what we do on this show, we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. In other words, we're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have the potential to put cha-ching in our pockets. Now, me personally, I primarily and usually do my research looking at the charts first. I don't pay a lot of mind to all the information until I find a chart that has heat. What am I referring to when I say heat? Well, how about a lot of volume coming in or a breakout setup? Or maybe there's just a lot of big bounces back to back. Something that says that chart's going to run. Well, I got a stock I want to share with you this weekend that I'm very excited about. This is First Hydrogen Corporation, ticker FHYDF. Now, I'm going to put this on the table right up front. She has not got a hot chart. And I know I'm always showing you those because that's what I want to show you. But folks, this is a hot company. They've got lots of current news, old news, lots of momentum. They're making deals. They're involved in a lot of aspects with hydrogen, which I expect is going to be big in the future. Probably the biggest energy supplier for us. Now, right now, we've got lots of clean energies we could choose from. We've got solar, we've got wind, we've got hydropower with dams and such. But that's not consistent. We can't count on it. The sun goes down, the wind stops blowing, and the water dries up. The best energy we got, and very clean, is nuclear. However, it's not the safest. Now, we've been doing a good job keeping it under control and monitoring it, but we've had a few accidents, and they could get very bad. So we would like to get away from nuclear, and hydrogen is super safe. Contrary to what a lot of people think, we don't burn the hydrogen to make the hydrogen fuel cells work. We are actually just breaking down the molecule. We're breaking it down to its essential elements, oxygen, water, and the byproduct, electricity and I think this is going to be the power leader of the future the whole world is on the same page right now we all want clean energy so FHYDF she finished the day just a little over $2 201 and she dropped just a little over 1% she is on the pink tier of the OTC she's current but she hasn't got any of those green ticks we're looking for the verified transfer agent, the verified profile. It's not a deal breaker, but we would like to see them. Now, they don't give us a lot of information here, and I think that's important. So we're going to go get some information about the company, starting off with their description, and then we'll dive on into their web page. They tell us over here that First Hydrogen Corp. is a Vancouver and London, UK-based company focused on zero-emission vehicles, green hydrogen production and distribution, and supercritical carbon dioxide extractor systems. The company has designed and built hydrogen fuel cell powered light commercial demonstrator vehicles known as LCV under two agreements with AVL powertrain. They make the hardware to get the car moving and Ballard power systems. They make the fuel cell batteries to get the car moving. The LCV has a range of 630 kilometers. That is roughly 400 miles. Initially, they were getting 400 kilometers. Now they're up to 630, better than expected. These vehicles are being trialed with an initial 16 fleet operators in the United Kingdom. At the same time, the company has launched its bespoke vehicle design phase, which will develop its fleet of proprietary zero emission vehicles. First Hydrogen is also developing refueling capability working with FEV Consulting. The company is also pursuing opportunities in green hydrogen production and distribution in the UK, EU, and North America. To get more information about the company, we've jumped on over here to their website, firsthydrogen.com. Now, the company's got three strategic avenues they're doing business in. One is to produce and build FCEVs fuel cell electric vehicles. Now, the funny thing here is, the vehicle you see in the picture is already built and on the road, but they don't have a name for it. Not that I found. 
They keep referring to it as the FCEV. I don't know if that's the name or not, but that's what we got to call it too. The gray van, that is generation two of their FCEV. This is going to be their commercialized one, the one they actually sell to the public. Their first one, generation one, is the white vans. These were created in partnership with another company so that they would have vans that they could trial, that they could test. And right now they've got 14 trials going on over in the UK, maybe one in Canada, and I think they're getting ready to start one in the USA. Now this is really smart what they're doing, building up everything in a small country. Because beyond vehicles, they are also producing and selling hydrogen. What they're going to do is put their production facility where all of their vehicles are at, where all these fleets are at. And these fleets are huge. We're talking thousands and thousands of cars. So they're going to make the hydrogen in that area and then put up refueling centers around those areas. Why put them in areas you're not? And this is going to be very cost effective for them. When I was in Scotland, our broadband was five times faster than anything here in America. How could that be? I'll tell you why. Because the country was so small, maybe the size of Texas. So it doesn't cost much to go from coast to coast with fiber optics or hydrogen or whatever it is you want to do. You can't do that in America, not cheap. So it's easier for them to start off in smaller countries where they can actually cover the entire country and then expand out. They're also going to be selling powertrains. Think of this as the equipment so that you can use the fuel cell technology. They're going to use it for tractors and boats and power banks and whatever else they can think of. We're already starting this with lithium batteries, but not fuel cell technology. So this company is getting ahead of the game fast, and this could have them blowing up in the future. So something we need to take a look at are the companies that they are doing business with. All of these companies they are associated with, and I like that. That assures me that this company I'm looking at is probably a good one. All these companies working with them, they vetted them. If they're going to work with them, then I feel safe that I can invest in them. So the companies we've got here is AVL. AVL is the world's largest independent company for development, simulation, and testing in the automotive industry. AVL provides concepts, solutions, methodologies in the fields of e-mobility. ADAS, and autonomous driving, vehicle integration, digitalization, virtualization, big data, and much more. It was this company that helped them get their first generation vehicles on the road. Ballard, this is the company that's making their fuel cell hydrogen batteries. And they are doing this with their fuel stack powered by compressed air. I don't know anything about that. Then we have ARUP. ARUP is a global sustainable development consulting firm of designers, planners, engineers, and technical specialists with over 17,000 employees across 33 countries. ARUP brings deep knowledge and experience regarding hydrogen studies and projects and will act as engineering consultant for our projects in the UK and North America. Ineos is a multinational chemicals company with a hydrogen strategy at the core. Being both a user and producer of hydrogen, Ineos has ambition to become Europe's leading producer of green hydrogen considered the fuel of the future. Green hydrogen is the purest and cleanest. Then we have FEV Consulting. FEV has access to over 3,000 global experts from one of the world's leading engineering service providers. The company is supporting First Hydrogen's development of mobile refueling stations and the creation of bespoke AI software to map and optimize hydrogen refueling networks across the UK, Europe, and North America. Now, there is lots of news we could be jumping into, but I've grabbed up what I think is important, which means I may miss stuff that you think is important. But let's take a whirl at this, and I'll show you what I found. The first piece of news that caught my attention came out last year, August 9th. They tell us here that the company was pleased to announce the expansion of its green hydrogen production plans to the North American market. The initial focus is going to be on Canada since they have an enormous resource of renewable energies, hydropower, solar, wind, 
all of which can be used to produce green hydrogen yielding no carbon emissions. On July 11th of last year, the government of Canada announced its first incentive funding for medium and heavy duty zero emission vehicles. They will provide $547 million of funding over the next four years. This new policy commitment will aid in creating new demand for commercial vehicles using green hydrogen. First Hydrogen Energy is now commencing the development of four key green hydrogen production facilities in the UK following the positive progress results. The North American expansion is part of First Hydrogen strategy to develop green hydrogen production in regions with strong policy support for green hydrogen or abundant renewable energy sources. The green hydrogen produced will be distributed nearby the production sites, thereby minimizing distribution costs, climate change, and pollution. The next piece of news also comes out from last year, November. First Hydrogen selects Quebec for first green hydrogen ecosystem and the production site for zero emission vehicles. They tell us the company announced it has selected the city of Shawanigan, Quebec, Canada to develop its first green hydrogen ecosystem. The company has conducted site evaluations and has now formally commenced the process to secure and develop respective sites for the local production of green hydrogen and the assembly of First Hydrogen Zero Emission Commercial Vehicles. First Hydrogen's LCVs, light commercial vehicles, are planned to be assembled in Shawanigan for distribution throughout North America in combination with the company's hydrogen as a service product offering. I guess they're going to couple a vehicle and hydrogen supply. The assembly factory will be designed for annual capacity of 25,000 vehicles per year when at full capacity and will represent a major boost to the green technology jobs in the region. And that last piece of news comes out February of 2023. The company is encouraged by EU's 250 billion euro green subsidiary. The company is anticipating the approval of the proposed 250 billion euro green subsidies announced by the European Commission, which will enhance the competitiveness of Europe's net zero industry and support the fast transition to climate neutrality. Subsidies would include tax breaks to businesses investing in net zero technologies. That will get people to invest in the company if they get a tax break faster permit issuances for green projects and loosening of aid rules that would allow EU member states to match the aid offered by third country for initial investments into sectors relevant to the net zero transition. First Hydrogen recently expanded its European activities to identify and sign up fleets for future European trials of the company's light commercial vans. Green hydrogen production and sourcing opportunities will also be identified and developed. I'm really liking this, folks. They're moving fast. America, Canada, Europe, the UK, and the UK and uh, Scotland are where they're initially bolstering their efforts because, as I said, it's a small country. But you get into Europe. There's a lot of small countries there as well. I think the, co the company is going to grow and grow fast. Let's go take a look at the stock and get some information on it. We've bounced on back here to the OTC markets to get this information. We're going to take a look at the relative volume first for First Hydrogen Corporation. She's normally doing roughly 2 million shares a day for the last 30 days, but she fell hard on Friday, considerably over 75% of her normal volume, dropping from roughly 2 million to 436,000. And I haven't got a clue why. I did not see any bad news anywhere. Share structure for First Hydrogen. Don't give us a lot of information, but our outstanding share count is roughly 70 million. And we know the float won't be over that, and it could be considerably less. And for those of you who are interested, the market cap is at 141, 141 million. To figure that out, just take your outstanding share count and multiply it times the price. Voila market cap. Financials for First Hydrogen. Well, we got nothing here, and I mean nothing. Not annually, not quarterly, not even on the balance sheet. And what's really bothersome and curious is you come over here to disclosures, just read the filings, there are none. No financials and no disclosures, and I don't know why. 
So I jumped over here to Yahoo Finance, see what I could learn. I didn't see any findings here either. I don't know what is up with this, but I did get some numbers. I am looking at the quarterly here. On the annual, there's nothing to be seen. On the quarterly, we see that they did $160,000 in June of 2022. We know that's thousands because they tell us to add three zeros to all these numbers as well. But since then, there's no revenues on the books, which doesn't surprise me. I wasn't expecting revenues. I don't believe this company is selling vehicles yet, right? They're still testing them. So I didn't expect to see any money on the books yet. So everything is kosher, but where are the filings? I would like to see those. Now let's take a look at the news. I've shown you some old news, but this is the current news going back to May of this year. First Hydrogen reports stellar performance of its hydrogen-powered LCV, light commercial vehicles, under real-world conditions. So good that they got praised by Rivius. We read that. They got praised by SSE. We read that as well. We also read that they made a significant milestone at Shawan again. This is the city in Quebec where they're not only building their hydrogen production facility, but also the facility to assemble their vehicles. Then we've got a piece of news here that came out at the end of July. First Hydrogen makes Energy Digital top 10 hydrogen companies, pioneering clean energy innovation. It's always good when the company you're interested in is getting attention. And the last piece of news came out at the beginning of this month. First Hydrogen reports a 630 kilometer range during SSE's trial. Folks, this has been exciting. I was reading the news and I saw when they were expecting 400 kilometers. Then they hit 530 kilometers and now they're up to 630 kilometers. That's exciting. Remember, this is an electric vehicle. It's just using a different type of battery. But the bottom line is, whether you're using lithium ion batteries or fuel cell hydrogen batteries, you want the most range you can get in your vehicle. So this is exciting. Now, I wish I could say the chart was just as exciting, but I think it's going to come up. Let's go take a look at it. So let's do some charting for first hydrogen. We're going to be doing this on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And that didn't cost me anything either. So we are looking at ticker FHYDF. This is a one-year, one-day chart. We've got a high bubble back in August, a 52-week high of $5, and a 52-week low of $1.70 in April. Now, it created a very strong support at roughly $2.39. It just kept bouncing on that for a very long time until she broke it in April. She bounced up and she's been going sideways ever since then. Now, coming down to our six month, four hour view, our high on the six month chart is $3.70. She has been rolling downhill ever since then, breaking her new established 200 day SMA Bouncing on that strong support at 239 one time, coming up, banging into that 200 day. I thought she was going to break out, and then she lost it all, hitting that 52 week low down here. Now, folks, a 52 week low can easily be a catalyst. It's like a flashing sign that says for sale, especially if the company has potential or value. This is the best price that has been around for a year. And I honestly believe between $1.70 and uh, 240 is going to be the buy zone. There's going to be a lot of accumulation and consolidation in this area. When she hit this 52-week low, she bounced off of it very quickly from $1.70 up to $2.25, creating another support right here at $2.19, where she just kept hitting her head. When she got real close to the 50, she jumped back up to that strong uh, support we had at 239. And then she's come back down to the 50, and that's where her battle is right now. She's struggling to get on top of that 50. Thankfully, we have got our 200-day haul underneath. A lot of penny stocks have been paying credence to the 200-day haul. It's a lot like your 200-day SMA. So hopefully, she won't come down any lower than that. But she could. She's got a low here of $1.70. As I said, anywhere between $1.70 and 240, I consider a good buy zone. So don't buy everything at once if you're interested. 
get some now. If she drops, you'll be able to buy more at a better price and won't feel so bad that she dropped. Jumping down to our one hour, 20 day look. So 20 days ago, we had a high of $2.27 and she has been on a downtrend all this time. She did break through the 20 twice, looking good, but she couldn't hold it and she fell. And right now we are at a low of $2.01. And all of our oscillators, just like the four hour chart, are pushing down. They are all cold right now. Our five day, five minute view. Oh, that's not looking real good either. All I can say, folks, is that I like the company. I think they have got a tremendous future ahead of them. I think they're in the right countries. I think they're building the company a smart way and they're expanding. So I think right now is a great time to look at the company, especially since it's cheap, right? This would be the best time to consider it. But of course, please do your own due diligence. Even what I shared with you, I only shared pieces. Those news presses, I gave you a couple of paragraphs. So please go do some more due diligence. I think you'll be happy with what you find. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-